want to alert uh, you folks right down the line that the Mel Allen Show will go right into the second game after Mel's show is over. And we have a special treat for you fans. I've had a lot of requests to hear a great interview that Mel Allen had when the late Bing Crosby visited Yankee Stadium. Bing, a very knowledgeable baseball fan, and Mel Allen had a great time that day, and we're going to bring it to you right now. Emory Air Freight proudly present Mel Allen with Mel Allen Remembers. Thank you very much. Hello there, everybody. It's been a lot of fun this summer talking with ball players of the past and chatting with you folks between games of Yankee doubleheaders. Nostalgia has been our theme. Our guest today is not a ball player, but what an entertainer. His name is Bing Crosby. We'll be back right after this message, friends. Voice recorder, on oxygen mask, on. You are listening to the sound of one of the world's great air forces. Hydraulic systems, on and checked. An air force with more planes at its disposal than Russia or even America. Ground equipment, clear. An air force that flies more often and to more places than any airline in the world. It's Emory, the Air Force and Air Freight. At Emory, we have more than just a fleet of planes at our command. We have a fleet of airlines, where we reserve space on key flights of practically every airline carrying packages. And we use hundreds of offline commuter and charter planes, even planes of our own where airline service is weak. We also have thousands of people, thousands of trucks, and hundreds of offices waiting for us on the ground. Control, this is TWA 463, ready for takeoff. The next time you have a package to ship, don't just ship it with an air freight company or even a package-only airline. Ship it with an Air Force. Emory, the Air Force in air freight. It was opening day at Yankee Stadium way back in 1947. And one of the people who attended that game was Bing Crosby. He was the guest of one of the Yankee owners. Knowing Bing, I asked him if he'd drop up to the booth and chat with us for a little while. He not only chatted with us, but he agreed to do an inning. And what you're going to hear now, friends, is Bing Crosby broadcasting the sixth inning, opening day, Red Sox and Yankees at Yankee Stadium in 1947. Here's Bing. Here's the next pitch to Johnny Pesky. Strike call. One and one. Johnny Pesky. Very fine ball player, Johnny. Good type of athlete, high class. Clean living fellow, very popular with his players and with the fans alike. The left-handed hitter has sort of a half-open stance at the plate. Here's the next pitch to him. He hits a line smash, which is taken by the first baseman, and doubles uh, Dominic DiMaggio off second. No play at first base. That's the second out. First baseman Suchak took that smash on the first hop and uh, threw out Dominic DiMaggio by a step. DiMaggio was flying down the baseline and couldn't make it. Now we got the mighty uh, Ted Williams up here. We kind of like Ted Williams out our way. He's from California, you know. He broke in with San Diego. Had his biggest minor league success out there. And, of course, Joe DiMaggio is our real pet, our real favorite. Born and raised in San Francisco, down around Fisherman's Wharf. Ted, I don't think, is a native son. There's an interesting thing here with uh, Paige and uh, Williams uh, being a little personal feud going on. There's nothing yeah. in the way of any animosity, but Page has always been able to pitch to Williams pretty good, and Ted's always anxious to get a base hit off of him. Well, any time the left-hander and get a base hit off a left-handed pitcher, it's quite an accomplishment at that. I guess Ted hits any kind of pitching. Here's the first pitch to him. It's called strike. Two outs. His men on first and third, and Joe Page is pitching to Ted Williams in the first half of the sixth inning. The Red Sox leading four to nothing. Ted stands up there with that wide stance. Steady, calm, cool, collected, flexes that big mace, and here's the pitch to him. He hits a high fly going up in the left field. Should be an easy chance. But John only has to go back a little. The wind got it, and he had to take it over his shoulder on a nice running catch. Looked like an easy fly out, but uh, the ball got up in the breeze. The breeze is blowing right to left out here, and he had to uh, take it on a dead run over his left shoulder. Gave the fans a little thrill sitting up in the stands there. So it wasn't easy out that it originally appeared to be. So that ends the inning, the first half of the sixth for the Boston Red Sox. I don't think there was any hit. Two up and uh, two men left. 
That's right. No runs, no hits, no errors, two men left. Bing, tell us a little bit about Pittsburgh. I know that's your pride and joy. Uh, uh, Bing is here, incidentally, friends with uh, co-owner Del Webb of the Yankees, and uh, they're very good friends, but uh, Bing being uh, co-owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates, his heart lies out there. Well, I, I was glad to be able to come up uh, here with Del because Del was nice enough to come out to Pittsburgh for our opening day, and uh, I wanted to see this mighty team of his perform, so he arranged for me to uh, get a free... Uh, Oakley to the Frankers. <laughs> well, Pittsburgh looks a little better, Mel. They uh, got a lot of youth. I think we got probably the youngest infielder in the National League. I may be guessing at that, but I don't think the average age is much over 22. And they're much uh, impressed, much pleased with the showing of uh, the Stanley Rojek, who's acquired from Brooklyn. Of course, Frankie Gustin, you know about. Ed Stevens has been up uh, a little bit and played with Montreal like last year. And then we've got a couple of rookies at second. A boy named Basgo from Fort Worth, who Makes a double play uh, look pretty easy, and he's a fair, fair hitter. Got a home run opening day. And, and we, we got, got a good manager over there, too, in Billy Meyer. Manager, Martin. I think, is going to be the key to the situation. If he can do uh, the job that he's done in the minors, uh, we're going to be at least in the first division. I don't know why he shouldn't do the same job. They're all ball players, and the baseball's played the same way in the minors as it is in the majors. Well, Bing, if that uh, should indicate he'd do well here. Yeah, Mel. If you'd like to show your appreciation for the Annie Oakley, well, yeah. Mr. Webb, get him some runs here. All right, I'll try. First hitter is uh, a two chuck, isn't it? That's right. called ball on it. No, it's strike. Got the outside corner. I wasn't watching very closely, but strike on two check in the last half to six. Fail four runs. Let's get some here. That's a ball. Ball one. Strike one. First baseman, two chuck. Mickey Harris pitched a nice ball game here. He's bailed himself out of a couple of difficult situations. Here's the next pitch of Suchak. Overhand fast ball that he grounds into the dirt back of the plate, making the count two strikes and one ball. Last half of the sixth inning. Mickey Harris, I uh, understood he was overweight, but he doesn't look it out there today. I think he's peeled off some of that beef that they were talking about in the newspapers uh, from the spring training camps. Here's the next pitch to Suchak. Sidearm curve ball. Didn't quite catch the corner, so it's a ball. It's two and two. He works fast. He's not too deliberate out there. And here's the next pitch. The high fly going out in the short, deep center. Dominic, the manager, fades back two or three steps, beats his hands together, and takes it for an easy out. First out of the inning, the last half of six. Next hitter is going to be Johnson. 24, yeah, Johnson. Johnson was walked last year, the last inning, and in what appeared to be a nice piece of strategy on the part of uh, Joe McCarthy was two men on. They put him on first to get to a Rizzuto ground into a double play. He's up there now with nobody on. There's one out. Last half of the sixth, and here's the pitch. It's a high ball. Johnson drove in 98 runs last year, so uh, I guess he was uh, the man to walk in that spot, huh, Mel? You're right, Bing. It worked out anyway. It worked out to our sorrow. Here's the next pitch. He fouls one back of the screen here, uh, high up in the upper tier. For our listeners who just tuned in, you're listening to an interview with Mel Allen and Bing Crosby. Mickey Harris still pitching for Boston. Shea started for the Yanks, and he was lifted uh, in the last frame for pitch hitter Bobby Brown, and Joe Page is now hurling for the Yankees. And here's the next pitch to uh, Johnson. High. Ball two. Two and one. Nice crowd out here. Mel, what would you say, 45, 50,000? Approximately there. Mm -hmm. I think you hit the nail just about right on the head. Here's the next pitch to Johnson. All outside. Didn't get the corner. Mickey didn't like that when he thought he got a piece of that plate. But it didn't appear up here like he did, and the umpire didn't think so either. So it's two, three balls, one strike. I see Cincinnati got another run. It's now only three to one in favor of Pittsburgh. I don't like that. Here's the next pitch. <laughs> strike two. Three and two. Three and two. Three and two favor of Pittsburgh. And it's a wire off to get a run, Bing. He did. Yeah. Talk to him. Thought he was in Philadelphia. Wish he was wish he'd stayed there. Well, you got no, uh, it's with, he used to be. Yeah. There's a high, hard smash going deep to Dominic DiMaggio. He takes it on the dead run in the right center field. Retiring Johnson for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up little Phil Rizzuto. Diminutive shortstop for the Yanks. Got a single in the first inning. Hit into a double play the next time up to end uh, an incipient Yank rally. Ten at 44,619. I was just three or four hundred off. Strike one on Phil. Two out. Pass the six. I'd say that's a pretty good guess with one sweeping, rolling eye around. That's from those old vaudeville days. Used to count in that house. <laughs> <laughs> 
Doesn't look much like a supper show. Phil tries to buzz for his foul ball. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, much like a supper show, you say, huh? <laughs> That's kind of how I used to get to count. It doesn't look like a supper show in Des Moines, I'll tell you that. <laughs> How are your boys, Bing? Fine, fine. They're old, old baseball fans. They try and play a little. I think they're pretty good. Here's the next pitch to Phil. He hits a high foul going up in the stands back at first base. The count is still two strikes, no balls. Got a fresh egg in there. Harris is ready to go. Wonderful here to sit and look at all this high-class baseball talent. Names like Stevens and Pesky, Gore, Williams, DiMaggio, Harris. Fellas I've only read about her about on the radio for so many years. Yeah, it'll make a good title for a movie, The Brothers DiMaggio. Don't you think that would be a good one? Great, great. I'll sing a song in there if I can get that. <laughs> Here's the next pitch to Philly. Hit the high pop fly going back in first base, maybe in the stand. No, no, Spence took it. <laughs> Right on the, right at the edge of the stands, right up against the bunting there that's uh, decorating the right field boxes uh, this afternoon and occasion of the opening day here at Yankee Stadium. Bing. Yeah, man. I think they ought to be, they ought to make a pic picture call the brothers to man, Joe, and you play, uh, you play Joe and let uh, uh, Hope play uh, Dominic. Why about that? I'm an infielder, though. <laughs> Second baseman. I can go to my right, too, for a ground ball. Can't make the throw, but I can go over there. <laughs> Well, friends, you've been listening uh, to Bing Crosby, who's out here today as the guest of Del Webb, owner of the New York Yankees, uh, watching the opening day festivities here at the stadium and doing a guest inning. And I certainly would like to repeat that we're naturally very proud and very privileged to have had that honor, Bing. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Mel, and I just hope I wasn't too confusing to the thousands of listeners you must have here in the metropolitan area. Listen, I was getting I ready. want to congratulate you on the great job you did uh, during the World Series. Really a wonderful performance. Thanks a million, Bing. I hope uh, we have the chance of getting back into one again. I imagine I'll hear you. I was just going to say, I was on the verge of going out and picketing the place, and you got on the air. You knock off a mean hunk of inning. <laughs> and I can't sing. I mean, I don't... nobody knows who's playing when I get through. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bing Crosby. Thank you, Melvin. Goodbye.